What's up everyone, I'm Lockouts, and in today's video I'll be discussing the best essences for Unholy DK in patch 8.3 for PvP, PvE, single target, and AoE. Check this out, baby. All right, so jumping over here into the essences, guys. Um, we're gonna talk about AOE first. We're only talking about essences. This is gonna be short and sweet to the point so that you guys can get a general idea of what you're gonna re be replacing um, essences with as you get them, as you're leveling them up. Um, this is just gonna be a couple of different quick sims so that you guys understand where to go with your builds, how to use them so that they're best abilities and you know you guys can go from there hopefully you guys are simming all your characters so that you know your stat weights and priorities your weaks and strengths or your weaknesses and then your strengths so when you are using these essences and you're combining them together so that you are able to maximize your dps output whether it's for aoe or single target now i'm going to talk about aoe first okay um a lot of, I'll, I'll, i went and i've researched page after page after page in world of warcraft and you know i i haven't ran my dk enough to know every single essence and unlock them all uh, along the way but i have done enough research and i have let, uh, played dk since they came out and know enough about them that i am able to relate this information to you uh so from what I've seen from the general consensus of the community from the top tier DKs, what they're running on keys for big cleave situations or even in raids for big cleave situations, if, if, if that's what you want to run. Um, raiding, you generally are going to run a single target build because you want to do as much DPS as you can to the boss because that's generally where 90% of your fight is going to be spent is on the boss anyways. Um, Anyways, going back into AOE, the general consensus of the top tier uh, DKs that I've seen in multiple dungeons, and we're talking about cleaving dungeons like uh, Freehold and Waycrest and uh, Underrot, Motherload, you know, big pulling situations. What you're going to do is be running Blood of the Enemy, okay? And the reason that they're running Blood of the Enemy with all these other miners like Focusing Iris, uh, Breath of the Dying, and Crucible of Flame in their other miner slots is because they want the miner traits abilities to proc off. They want their haste from the Focusing Iris. They want the uh, um, fire damage from the Breath of the Dying. They want fire damage from Crucible of Flame, okay? Um... What, what ends up happening is is when you have your ghoul and dark transformation and you have festering wounds on all your targets and you drop your death and decay, you're in holy frenzies out and you're about to bust all these wounds, right before you bust them all and you have all your festering wounds already applied to your target, that's when you're gonna pop off your blood of the enemy. That's gonna be in your main slot. The reason that you use it like this is because when you're about to bust all these festering wounds, you get your crit bonus damage from blood of the enemy and you do insane amounts of aoe cleave and it's 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 pretty incredible what you could actually generate with an uh, uh unholy dk that's cleaving to his max potential with uh blood of the enemy um going over into single target now there's a, a, a also a, a, before i say single target you could also replace blood of the enemy with your focusing iris if you wanted to be a casting dk it's just it, it's got too big of a channel um, compared to blood of the enemy because at the time when you're ready to burst uh, You want it to be real quick and you want to pop all your festering wounds That's why you're gonna pick blood of the enemy over your focusing iris because you're not popping your festering wounds and getting the critical strike bonus If you would use focusing iris So if you don't have blood of the enemy leveled up and you do have focusing iris you could probably pick it at that point It's situational and it depends on if you already have this ranked up or not um, if you do have these ranked up though blood of the enemy that way that you're able to pop this before you burst all your first festering wounds so that you get the bonus damage from you know blood of the enemy and the crit stuff um, moving now into single target okay um, what we could talk about here is it's built a couple of different ways the ways that these guys are running it um, 
with vision of perfection, your apocalypse is reduced by 20%, so you're able to apocalypse more. And this is gonna be for PvP or PvE situations, okay? Um, you could run vision of perfection. You get two extra army of the dead ghouls for 15 seconds. Your apocalypse is, is cooled down, so you're able to apocalypse more. You're able to get more ghouls out, and you get uh, the minor trait bonuses then again from your focusing iris, your breath of the dying, your crucible of flame. Another thing that you could replace this out with now is going to be um, uh, breath, of, breath of the Dying or Crucible of Flame. So now this is going to be all completely preference right here at this point. It's going to be what do you have leveled up? What is unlocked for you on your character? Uh, what do you enjoy playing more? If you want to play Crucible of Flame so that you have an extra little bit of a heal maybe for yourself or maybe a party or raid member or in PvP or PvE, depending, Crucible of Flame works for that. Breath of the Dying, uh, when you rank it up to at least it's level 2, if your target is above or below 80% and then 20%, 20% Breath of the Dying acts as an execute for you. You get ex an execute as a DK. Um, if you uh, use it on a target that's above 80%, uh, it'll reduce the cooldown by 30 seconds so that you can use this uh, every 15 seconds. Um, it synergizes a little bit better with your play style and the way the ads are dying throughout the dungeons. That's why uh, a lot, a lot of DKs are running Breath of the Dying right now over Blood of the Enemy. Blood of the Enemy, there are, I mean, uh, Crucible of Flame. Crucible of Flame is good as a miner because, you know, you end up getting that extra little dot and stuff like that. So you could put it on a miner for your uh, three miner slots that you have. Or you could run Crucible as a main and then switch it back out for Breath of the Dying. It's really kind of up to you what, what is running higher what do you have that's unlocked at the time um another thing that i see a lot of dks are running man is conflict and strife conflict and strife gives you burst verse 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 it's crazy it's insane the versatility for an unholy dk is extra mental just for the simple fact of you get your healing bonus benefit from your death strikes and especially if your death strike is proc you get that extra you know healing bonus from a proc that a dk uh verse reduces the damage that you take so that you're able to mitigate more damage it also maximizes damage output that you have so you know mastery for your dot damage verse for pvp and stuff like that single target again we're going to go back over this real quick it's going to be breath of the dying or or crucible of flame depending on what you have in your major slot uh crucible of flame or your breath of the dying in a minor slot you're going to want your blood of the enemy in there so that you get a haste bonus benefit after it reaches 40 stacks from blood soaked um you're going to want focusing iris in there as a minor also just for the simple fact of uh you get uh, uh, haste from your miner that's on that one uh, if you're in aoe situations you run blood of the enemy the reason that you're running blood of the enemy is because you get ready to pop all your festering wounds when you get ready to pop all your festering wounds you pop your blood of the enemy you get the damage benefit bonus from the critical strike that's on there now also this is completely situational it depends on if you have this ranked up or leveled up or not single target max target dps if you are raiding okay condensed life force if you have it ranked up to at least a level three it is going to be the best single target for you everything that i've simmed everything that i've asked other top tier dks other dks that are all on the charts right now i see them all simming the same thing and if you're raiding and you're in big boss fights uh you know every three minutes that you could have this pop it out it's a it gives you a haste um uh, benefits from it every time that the guy uh it cast for you so that you get more haste on your character on holy dk benefits so much from haste uh he's such a slow guy it's such a slow rotation that's in it because you have so much damage that's going on if you at the end of the fight if you look at your details or your your recount and you see all your spell damage in there there's so much so much damage from your pets abilities so much stuff from you condensed life force is able to to focus just that little bit of extra single target in there to help boost you up in fights um 
that's if you have this to its rank three and you're able to get the haste benefit bonus. Now, other DKs are going to argue that Cadet's Life Force is shit at this point because of, you know, the Breath of Dying or the way that Crucible is, is synergizing at, at the moment. And uh, it, it, it's up to you. It's all going to be preference. What is going to be stronger for you? What is going to be higher ranked? This is what the top tier DKs are running. These are screenshots from the top tier dk's um necklaces so that you could see what the different builds are what they're running with different ranks in their necklaces all right uh if you guys learned anything from this if this helped you out a little bit if this got you started in your journey to be an amazing unholy dk do all the things to help a fella out like me like follow subscribe i'm lockhouse baby peace